What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. And we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater Wall. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, simply comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get to those questions first. first. And that is what Mihai Ungurane did. What happens to an, a loyal imperial citizen's soul after his death? Does the God Emperor protect it in his passage through the warp and move on? Does the Emperor devour the soul to empower and sustain itself? Does the Chaos Gods consume it? So if you are a loyalist Imperial citizen, meaning you pray to the God Emperor, you believe in the Imperial Creed, <coughs> when you die, your soul will become part of the Emperor's um, um, Army of the Light. Just like Lupe Fiasco said. Uh, <laughs> And uh, we have a 40 facts video on the life after death, right? The afterlife. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 40 facts on the afterlife in 40K. And we go through every single race and we tell you what happens or what they believe happens and what actually does happen. The most interesting one is the Tyranids one. It's not. <laughs> but yeah, check that video out. Yeah. This one is by Noah Locke. Can a Dreadnought Sarcophagus be transferred to a different suit? Also, could a Dreadnought Sarcophagus be used to pilot a Knight Titan? Um, yeah, you could transfer uh, the Sarcophagus uh, hole, I guess. Chassis? Chassis? Chassis. Um, into another one, but they don't really do it. Um, it's kind of pretty much if you're in one Dreadnought, you're, you're there. Basically. Yeah, basically. And uh, could a Dreadnought Sarcophagus pilot a knight? No. Because uh, it's like kind of like Pacific Rim, where if you're piloting a knight, or a, a titan for that matter, um, it's like a neural interface. And yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're in a Dreadnought, you're dying. <laughs> Check out our 40 facts on how to pilot a titan and how to pilot an imperial knight. Mm -hmm. That would explain more of, on that. Yeah. Uh, next question comes from Envilor. You're gonna like this one. I'm not. If a crew ate the Emperor, what ability would he gain? Uh, watch. Flying. Yeah, flying. 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 We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> this one's by Lance Fleece. <laughs> Do you guys know of any fan-based Tau lore? If not, please, would you guys be willing to give me any tips? Also, uh, suggestion. Uh, do Commander Shadow Sun. So yeah, I do plan on doing Commander Shadow Sun. Uh, there's very little Tau lore out there. Um, there are a few short stories here and there. There is one uh, Tau lore that was sent to us, I believe by, oh, what was his name? Forgot his name, but go to our playlist on fan lores and there is one on the Tau there, check it out. Um, but tips, I'd say read your codex first and then expand from there. Because your codex will give you all the base info and then you can talk about a different sept or a different commander that was maybe cut off from returning to the uh, Tau spheres of expansion or something like that. Or uh, check out, because I do have my own Tau, um, Tau lore. Uh, just check that out. <laughs> is it on, it's on the playlist? I believe it is on the playlist. If not, type in like Burning Moon Contingent. I forgot what I named the video, but it, 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 it's out there. Uh, next question. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Next question comes from Inquisitor Samandrail. <clears throat> what is a good insult for an Imperial player uh, to call a Tau player? Space tuna, fish face, anything? Um, yeah. Weeb. Weeb. Uh, Nikolai Kochuvkov. Fulgrim and Ferris Manus fought as equals, even though Fulgrim had already succumbed to chaos. Does that mean that Ferris Manus would be able to beat Fulgrim before the heresy? Yes, we talked about this a little bit more in one of the videos, but um, Ferris Manus was a better hand-to-hand um, -hand fighter or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that he was, he was uh, empowered. Fulgrim was empowered and Ferris Manus was tired from killing all those uh, Emperor's children uh, to get to. 
before. Yeah, because this was the uh, Isfahan massacre, right? Right before the actual massacre happened. Yeah. Uh, Fulgrim was already deep fighting, and then or no, Manus was you know deep in the fight, and then Fulgrim shows up and he's like, "You, me, here." Yep, and they fought each other, and everybody stopped and watched, just like in the movie Troy, when when Hector fights the cousin of Achilles. Watch it, it's on Netflix. I haven't seen Troy, I always wanted to. I, I remember I started watching Troy and there was a love story right away and I was like, this is stupid. So I stopped watching. <laughs> um, kind of like, um, what's that zombie show? Walking, Walking Dead. Dead. Yeah, the love story killed it for me so I stopped watching like season one. But then it picks up. Not The Walking Dead, Troy. So yeah. Next question comes from Joe Cun. Ooh. What organism in the 40k universe would be recommended the Tyranids try to consume in order to get to a godlike level of power? That's a good question. Um, hmm. Um, I mean, I, I guess a Catan shard, right? A Catan shard is, is uh, organic. It's made out of carbon, isn't it? Or it's made out of a shard? It's made out of like... Well, I think in one of the lores, I don't know if this has been, like, taken out or whatever, but, like, Catan are made out of the universe itself, like, stars and matter and atoms, so all that shit. Mm -hmm. I guess carbon is part of it, too. So there you go. Yeah. That's our, that's our best answer. <laughs> Next question. Uh, this one's by Gulissa. Where does all the original biomass for the Tyranids come from? I understand after they take over a world, they incorporate it, but how did they get troops to conquer a planet in the first place? They came in already, like, beefy. So it's like, uh, you got some Campbell's chicken noodle soup, but you take off all the soup, and you just leave the noodles and the beef and all that stuff? Yeah, there's, sure. There's no, there's no beef in chicken noodle soup. No, it's just chicken and some vegetables. That's true. It's mostly broth. <laughs> Uh, next question comes from Marcin Nevinirol. I know you can kill Lucius the Eternal, but what about cutting off his arms and legs and then locking him somewhere? Would that counter his ability? That literally is the best thing. Uh, how do you kill an immortal? Trap him. <laughs> That's, which is what happened to, um, what's his name? Uh, right. Vulcan. Didn't, oh, yeah. didn't the Night Hunter trap him and he was like stuck in there for years mm -hmm. just being tortured? Yeah, having his thing thing cut off, getting yeah. incinerated. Yeah. Yeah. This one's by Wolf Dragon 12 JT. Do you think that people aren't getting their questions answered because they don't believe they will be answered so they don't have enough energy for the wall? Yes, exactly. Is that a perp? No, it's not. I thought your thumbnail was um, a hero click style. <laughs> it's like a wolf. It's like a wolf, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you need to believe that your answer is going to be, your question is going to be answered in order for it to get answered. That's just how it works. Next question comes from uh, AJ Na? Or AJ Na. What do you think the Emperor said to Gilliman when he was with him after the fight with Magnus? <laughs> your brother's a bitch, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's the first thing he said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next question. Joe Kun. What organisms in the 40k universe would you recommend the Tyranids to try to consume in order to get godlike levels of power? The Catan. Chart. The old ones. Well, the old ones might have created them. Well, right. They gotta, like, rebel against their master. <coughs> yes. Next question comes from Brother Argomandus. <coughs> he has three. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> We're just not going to answer. I'm just kidding. How does one get to pilot a nemesis dread knight, a killer cans, a battle suit, uh, of, the, of the Tau, etc.? I know about dreadnoughts and hell brutes, but how do you earn the glory to ride a massive war machine such as a nemesis dread knight? Uh, you got to be basically the best of the best, so much so that you're like, hey, you're doing too good on the battlefield. Learn to pilot this thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you can be the best of the best at that pilot. Yeah. But honestly, that's what it is. Uh, fire warriors, they train. They become fire warriors. Once they become fire warriors, they keep training. If they get promoted, they become bodyguards. Once those bodyguards have 
done their, I think it's like trial of fire or some, something like that. And then they get promoted to use broadside battle suits. Once they become really awesome at using broadsides, then they move up to crisis teams. Once those crisis teams become really badass, then they become bodyguards to a crisis suit commander. And then maybe then they themselves become commanders. So it's all a chain of command. It's all about living and uh, protecting and killing. Yep. Uh, as far as a killer can and a death dread, for the killer can, it's um, it's not about your skills. It's about who you know. If a Gretchen knows a weird, or not a weird boy, a mech boy, then he can get into a killer can. Uh, if it's a death dread, the opposite, again, about skills, it's not really the best of the orcs that become death dreads. It's the ones that die or are about to die, and the um, mad docs take the bodies to the... Um, Big Macs and the Big Macs create death dreads. So you have to suck in order to become <laughs> better. <laughs> yeah. Next uh, next question is, I've read the Necrons are capable of communicating with other species. It's cool. But well, what do they tell them? I thought they would just go and burn up everything once someone w wakes them up. So the way that the um, Tomb Worlds wake up is that it's a process. So the, the Necron Overlord is the one who will actually do the negotiation. And they are the last to actually awaken in a tomb world. So <clears throat> if you're a planet uh, and you have people living on you, um, like lice, um, and there's a tomb world, and that tomb world gets awoken, you're going to get attacked by the, the mindless Necron drones. Um, so more, more than likely, the there will never be any negotiation. But in a situation where like the tomb world is awakened, everything gets fully awoken, and the overlord sees like a moon or another planet that's nearby that wants to, um, that he sees value in allying instead of fighting, then he'll just go and just, you know, do his regular politicking. Politicking. He would negotiate and he would like, um, you know, do his thing and use that species for the advantage of the dynasty. Um, but then at the end of the day, like, it is just the dynasty. It, it, he wants the dynasty to progress. So enslavement would be ideal, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Last, <laughs> last question, do you have one? I do. <clears throat> uh, this one is by an Anviller. <clears throat> what would happen if the crew date the Emperor? <laughs> uh, just like Nightcrawler, where he like phases in and out, into another dimension, and then he pops out. That's what the crew would. That would happen to the crew. I think uh, once the crew eats the emperor's flesh, he would also gain the question: What would happen if I ate the emperor's flesh? Yes, and it's kind of like Lucius the Eternal. So whenever any being eats that crew who ate the emperor, would then gain the the um, the curiosity of what would happen if the crew <laughs> ate the emperor. And, and it just it goes, just on, goes and on, on forever and ever. Yep. And those were the questions for today. Thank you guys for uh, asking <coughs> us those questions, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed our answers. And don't forget, there is a Patreon-exclusive Greater Wall, so you can watch that now if you jump on over to Patreon. It's only a simple dollar a month, and it gets you some creepy pastas and... Other stuff. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for your support, for liking, commenting, and sharing, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. This has been the Sound Alchemist. Gersh 1. We're out of here. Oh, <laughs>